Three words, or three letters rather. R-U-M, rum. <laughs> rum is the all-American spirit. It embodies a certain revolutionary bravado, and it's the only spirit, my friends, that have significantly contributed to the discovery of a new nation, this nation, America. My name is Dwayne. I'm here to talk to you about the fascinating spirit known as rum. Rum is made from distilling fermented molasses, which is the byproduct of transforming sugarcane <laughs> into sugar. Sugarcane was brought to the Americas by Christopher Columbus and his band of merry men in the 14th century from the Canary Islands. And as it turns out, the islands of what we now refer to as the Caribbean was well suited for growing sugarcane. And before long, sugarcane was being grown on every island in the Caribbean. It was in the 17th century, the early 17th century, that it was discovered that molasses left out in the sun could be fermented, and sugarcane, uh, 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 rum as we know it today, was born. By the end of the 17th century, my friend, New England, of all places, had emerged as the world's top producer of rum. <laughs> They're good looking pictures, right? <laughs> I thought so. Uh, but uh, rum is a, a revolutionary drink. We're all familiar with a certain incident that happened in uh, Boston uh, where uh, tea, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, it wasn't just about tea. Rum played a key role. Influential folks the likes of Samuel Adams and John Hancock uh, saw that uh, taxation was impacting their profit margins on the bootlegging of rum, and so they rallied their supporters and war was inevitable. George Washington insisted on having, at a minimum, a barrel of rum at, at his inauguration or he wasn't going to take the job. <laughs> this is how much Americans appreciate rum. From that point on, my friends, rum continued to surge in popularity until prohibition put a damper on its availability. Uh, uh, bootleggers at the time saw it much more economical to peddle a spirit made from homegrown ingredients such as rye and, and uh, corn. And this is about when we start to see rum's popularity uh, beginning to wane. Uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, however, was the Second World War. Before the war, uh, England and France was the world's top consumer of rum and sugarcane coming out of the Americas. And so during the war, when German U-boats, and you're familiar with those little things, right? German U-boats, they were patrolling the Atlantic and essentially blasting every transport vessel out of the water. <laughs> and so as a result, we saw sugarcane distilleries, uh, uh, rum distilleries rather, and sugar plantations going bankrupt because they had these huge stockpiles of rum that they just couldn't get to market. Fast forward to 2012, rum is on the rise. Today we have access to more varieties and uh, greater quantities of rum than ever before. But in order for you to understand and fully get the, the true experience of rum, you have to understand uh, the categories of rum. There are six categories. And to make the most of your rum drinking, as I said, it's best to understand how to appreciate and, the, uh, and, and how to best utilize these categories of rum. White rums, we're all familiar with white rums. You probably find those most common just about every place. Uh, uh, amber rums, gold rums, or dark rums. There are spice rums and, and flavored rums. They're those all in the same category. Overproof rums, and then my favorite, aged rums. Your white rums are perfect for making your fruity, your fruity cocktails. These are cocktails where you want to taste the, the ingredients rather than, rather than the spirit. They're light in body. Uh, gold rums are great if you want to enjoy them over ice with cola. <laughs> over ice with cola. Uh, uh, they'll bring a little bit more rumminess to your cocktail experience. Uh, dark rums are great uh, for cooking, perhaps over ice with cola. Uh, overproof rums are especially useful when you've had one of those days and you need a little bit more lift. These are going to be rums that bring about 63% ABV, alcohol by volume, right? A little bit stronger. Uh, aged rums really represent the alchemy that's involved in rum making. These are rums that you're going to enjoy neat or uh, over ice with a splash of uh, water, never with cola. These rums are typically aged between 7 and 30 years. You don't want to put cola in a rum that's about 30 years old, right? So my friends, consider yourself rummed. 
go out, grab a good bottle of rum, uncap American history, and share it with your friends. We brought some samples today, so uh, join me over in the corner. My name is Dwayne. It was a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you.